In the last video, we learned about the definitions of inverse functions and one-to-one -one functions. We first learned the informal definition of the one-to-one -one function, saying that different inputs have to have different outputs and vice versa. And then we learned the formal definition, which you see right here. If A is not equal to B, those are our X values, then F of A is not equal to F of B, which is our Y values. Or if f of a is equal to f of b, again our y values, then our x values have to be the same as well. Okay, we saw this example previously and we just looked at it and we knew it was not one to one because we saw that we had repeat y values. But now let's explore this by using our formal definition. So that definition says if a is not equal to b, then f of a is not equal to f of b. Or if f of a is equal to f of b, then a is equal to b. Now, I'm going to start with the first one to prove that this is not a function. So if my a value is equal to 1, and I'm picking 1 because that's what I see here, and my b value is negative 4, and that's what I see here, and we see that in this case, A is not equal to B. Now, if I look at F of A, which is F of 1, I see that one is equal to 6, my Y value. If I look at F of B, which is F of negative 4, that is equal to 6, my Y value. So we see that F of A is equivalent to F of B. And we see that this contradicts either one of our statements here. If we look at the first one, we see that A is not equal to B, but yet we see that this part doesn't hold. Or if I look at F of A is equal to B, which is happening here, then this part doesn't hold. So in either one of these instances, I have just proved that this example is not a function by using my formal definition. Okay, now this one was easy because I knew the answer before I even started, right? I saw my ordered pairs had repeat Y values, so I knew it right away. So this one was really obvious. Let's go ahead and do another example. So in this example, the function is described as F of X equals 2X minus 3. And this one even gives you a strong hint. This is to tell us that F is 1 to 1, meaning that it does have an inverse function. Now, this one is also pretty easy because if I were to graph this, I know that this is a linear function, so the graph is a straight line. And since I know that my graph is a straight line, that means it passes the horizontal line test. No horizontal line is going to pass through this more than one. And so we know right away that this is a function. But we now want to prove it by using the formal definition. I have copied down the second possibility to prove that it is a function, because I think that that one's a little bit easier in this case. Okay, so I'm going to look at this here, and I'm going to plug my A and my B into the function at hand. And then I'm going to simplify that to prove that if that's the case, A is going to be equivalent to B. So on the left, I'm going to do F of A. And on the right, I'm going to f of b. And if this is true, then that's going to work down that a is equal to b. So to figure out what f of a is, I just plug a into my function, 2a minus 3. If I plug in b, I just plug it in again to my function, 2b minus 3. So all I need to do now is to simplify this and work it down to a is equal to b. Well, this one's pretty easy. I just cancel out things from both sides. So the very first thing that I do is I add 3 to both sides, which those cancel out. And then I divide by 2 from both sides. And so the 2s cancel out. And then, of course, we get what we want it to be. A is equal to B. So I started out saying if this is true, then this is also true, meaning I've just proved that my function is 1 to 1. Okay, let's move on to the second example of this type here. I have g of x is equal to x squared plus 1, and I'm trying to prove that this one is not a one-to-one -one function, meaning it does not have an inverse. 
Now, if we want to think back behind this, we know that this is a degree 2 equation, and we know that degree 2 equations have the shape of a parabola. This one's positive, so this parabola opens up. We very obviously know that my parabola is not going to pass my horizontal line test, so we know that this one is not one-to-one. -one. But we need to prove it by now using my formal definition. So let me try and do it the same way that I started by using example one. Let me plug in A and B into my function, and let's figure out what happens here. So first I'm going to do G of A and see if that is equal to G of B. So this is what I'm doing here. So if I plug A into this, that gives me A squared plus 1 is equal to, and then if I plug B into this, B squared plus 1. Now I know very easily that these squares cancel out, that these 1s cancel out, and so that leaves us with A squared is equal to B squared. Now we might think that we can go ahead and just square root both of these sides, and then that proves us that A is equal to B, and we actually prove that it is a one-to-one -one function, but we know that it's not true because that's the graph. Well, if you ever force in a square root like you did here, then you must also force in A plus or minus. So we actually have that A is equal to either a positive or a negative B, and therefore, if A is equal to positive B and A could also be equal to negative B, that tells us that A is not necessarily equal to B. So this part doesn't hold true. Or if you wanted to prove this a different way, you can pick two A and B values. So let's just say that A is equal to 2 and B is equal to negative 2. And if I plug both of those into the function, so if I do g of a, that gives me 2 squared plus 1, or 4 plus 1, which is 5. Or if I do g of b, which is negative 2 squared plus 1, negative 2 squared is positive 4, plus 1 equals 5. And so we have just proven the opposite is not true. We have shown that A is not equal to B, but in fact, G of A, which is a 5 value, is equivalent to G of B, which is a 5 value. So we've proved that this one is not true by using both of these here. Now, you don't have to do both of them on your homework, but you just need to be familiar with how both of those work. And so this video summarizes up the way to use a formal definition of the one-to-one -one function to prove something is or isn't a one-to-one -one function.